I know for sure that you, like myself, have certain things you really do not like. Now, as I stand here and, and just think about it, just the mere thought of I'm so sorry you were just witness to a man suffering from a bout of intense emotion. I hope it will not happen again. I'll do my very best. But such is the intensity of the thing I do not like. And um, I'm sure you can understand I'm shaken, rocked. Um, it's a recent event. In fact, it happened yesterday. I was out and about, as I am sometimes, minding my own business. I had absolutely no involvement whatsoever in anybody else. I was just doing my thing. When out of nowhere this character appears, who apparently knows me, I did not know him. He wasn't in my inner circle, outer circle, never seen him before. And he brings up something that completely shattered, it obliterated, it annihilated my good vibration. And that something was something from the past. Now, I'll get to that something, but the issue is why do that? Why do such a thing? Why come up to someone? The man was a giggling away as he was retelling this tale. And meanwhile, my spirit internally was shattered. It was, you know, think of volcanic eruptions, think of earthquakes and other geological horrors. That is what had happened inside. And I don't like that at all. Hence the emotions I showed earlier. Now, as for the thing, um, you know, I couldn't sleep. It, it just went like, PTSD, you know, I, I turned this way and that way, but I kept seeing that moment again and again and again. It was terrible. It was terrible. So, I don't know, about four in the morning, I realized the only way to cleanse my soul would be to confess, to share this incident and allow you to tell me whether I am this or whether I am that. So we begin with a bakery in Amsterdam. This bakery, um, well, actually for various reasons, which include legal, I can't mention the name of the bakery, but it's still there. I saw it yesterday. Um, there's this bakery, and this bakery, they bake a particular loaf of bread. Again, for the same reasons, I cannot tell you the name of that loaf of bread, but it's could smell it as I passed yesterday morning, so I know it's still there. Um, and many years ago, I came into contact with this loaf of bread, and I fell in love with this loaf of bread. And right up until the incident I'm about to discuss, without fail, once a week, I went to the bakery. I can't mention the name. I got the loaf of bread, went home, had a few slices with my coffee, and it was just, wow, amazing. So one um, sunny summer morning, I was off to the bakery uh, on my bicycle. Absolutely nothing happening. You know, sun out there, sky blue, a few fluffy white clouds dancing across the sky. I get to the bakery and find my way blocked by a little old lady with a small, fluffy, white dog. Now, I think it's a genetic thing, or it could be a personal thing, but I don't like small, fluffy, white dogs, and small, fluffy, white dogs do not like me. So you've got instant tension. Adding to the mix is the fact we have a little old lady. Now, 
culture, tradition, popular myth has taught us to look at little old ladies and feel warm and squishy inside. Ooh, ooh, little old lady. But historical evidence also tells us that not all little old ladies are nice little old ladies. Some little old ladies are rather horrible. And I looked into the eyes of this little old lady and they were cold, like steel, without any sign of emotion. I shivered. And I remembered our recent history. Take the case of the young lady, Snow White, about to set out on a journey into life when she is given an apple, a drugged apple. And who gave her that apple? A little old lady. Or what of that young chappy, Hansel, with his sister Gretel, kidnapped and almost eaten alive by a little old lady? So when it comes to fearing little old ladies, this is the point where I would say, Your Honor, I rest my case. The third element in the situation was the fact that I had spied through the door of the bakery. There was only one loaf left of my favorite bread. Now, usually, usually, even though I do not necessarily like dangerous little old ladies, I would have said, after you, madam. She would have trotted in with her little dog. But given the fact that I needed that loaf and, um, well, who knows, maybe it was the weather. I, I wouldn't say I pushed the lady. I prevented her from coming in. I got in. And I made for that loaf, grabbed the loaf. And as I did, behind me was this terrible, terrible cacophony. Everybody in the bakery turned around and stared at the little old lady and the fluffy white dog. The fluffy white dog was howling as if it had been stabbed. And the little old lady was wailing as if I had eaten her children. Eventually, the people in the bakery managed to calm her down. And she said, she had walked for kilometers and kilometers to get the loaf of bread that was in my hand. I knew that was a lie. I could see it in her eyes. She fooled everybody except myself. And because of that, there's no way I was going to give her the loaf. I had the loaf, finders, keepers, that kind of thing. And I planned to do so. Except the fact is everyone in the bakery bought the little old lady's tail and began to tut in my direction. Can you imagine seven whole minutes of people going... I've faced many dangers in my life, but this was, this was something terrible. So I decided, okay, okay, I'm going to get a different loaf of bread. Handed the loaf of bread to the lady, and as I was sort of halfway through the handing over process, she snatched it out of my hands. Well, I'm telling you, that just, that was too much. Had she said, thank you, just smiled, anything, but snatching that, that was, there, there are lines, you know, that, that was beyond the pale, so to say. And so I snatched it back. And as I snatched it back, the little white dog, small, fluffy white dog, it went into attack mode, and attack mode as it turned basically into a wolf, went for my leg. And I was having none of it whatsoever, so I had this plan the dog came up to me. And remember, I'm not a dog hater, just, just get that clear. I had this wonderful plan. So as the dog came to me, I planned to sort of flick it onto the counter so it could sort of go and eat the bread behind the counter. But, and think of it, you know, the dog is about this size. So you make the mental calculation that it's definitely heavier than a regular football. But it turns out that small, fluffy white dogs are possibly filled with 70% helium. So I sort of flicked this dog. It flew up. 
And it just so happened this was one of those bakers with a big rotating fan. So the leash got caught in the fan. And thank heavens, thank heavens, the leash was not around the neck of the dog. Otherwise, that would have been very, very sad. Uh, the dog had one of those sort of harness, harness kind of things. Um, sort of, you'd expect the dog to yodel. It was really Bavarian sort of stuff. And uh, so it was swinging around and yelping and everything. And um, yeah, well, somebody, I don't know what kind of human being that was, had gone and called the police. So suddenly you have two of Amsterdam's finest officers of the law coming into the bakery and somebody points at me and at that moment I sort of think look I'm sure these police have lots and st lots and lots of stuff to do and you know what's the point of hanging around so I made for the door now slight diversion back in the day my nickname was Chidi Gonzalez why was it Chidi Gonzalez because of I don't know if you know the cartoon Speedy Gonzalez I was very, very, very fast back in the day. Um, as it was, they caught me. I didn't make it through the door. And uh, there's stuff, there's no need discussing. But what I want is for you to tell me, given what you now know, am I, as the judge said, a cold-hearted scoundrel or a simple, humble man in search of a loaf of bread and nothing more. Thank you.